These notes will walk you through an example problem where we're calculating a torque using IJK vectors and expressing the answer with IJK vectors. So this will be like a full-on example of using the cross product definition of torque and doing the whole thing at a very abstract mathematical level. This is an AP topic. It comes up more, this, this math comes up more when we do magnetism. Okay, if we're going to use the cross product, we probably want to do a quick recap, but for, for a full treatment, you should look in your earlier notes. So that's how you write cross product, and here's how you say it, A cross B. Now, what does it mean? Well, it means you have two vectors. So, for example, if you had these two vectors like that, it means imagine picking one up and putting it like that so they make a ver vertex. So their ends, their tails make a vertex. They won't be given to you that way necessarily. Vectors don't... Uh, have a position in space, and when we're talking about the angle between them, mathematically we can pick it up and move it like that to figure out the angle. So you have two vectors like that, you've arranged them so they make a vertex at their tails, that creates an angle between them. The cross product has a strength and a direction. The strength or magnitude of the cross product is just given by AB sine theta, and it's a measure of how perpendicular they are. This is like taking the perpendicular part of B, the, the part that's perpendicular to A, and multiplying it times the full length of A, or vice versa, you get the same result either way. The direction of the product, cross product is found using the right-hand rule. And I'll do a quick recap of that. What you do is you point your fingers in the direction of the first vector, A, in this case. So right hand, not left hand, point your fingers in the direction of A. Then you turn your wrist until you can naturally and easily move in the direction of your palm from your fingers pointing in the direction of A to your fingers pointing in the direction of B, like that. Or another way to think of it is your palm sort of points in the direction of B, like spider webs. You go like that, and then you make your thumb perpendicular to that plane, and that's the direction of the result, the product. Okay, in this case, it would be up out of the page towards you. All right, we also have to recap how i, j, and k vectors work when we have cross products. So the first is i cross i. That means one vector points right, and the other vector points right, like that. The angle between them would be zero, and the sine of zero is zero. Sine of zero is zero, so this would be zero. Likewise for this, this means two vectors pointing up, the angle between them is zero. They are not perpendicular at all, they're parallel. For i cross j, you go i cross j like that, points out of the page. The, the, sign, the angle is 90 degrees, the sine of 90 degrees is 1. So you have a vector with a length of 1, a vector with a length of 1, and sine of 90 degrees is 1. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. And if you go like this and it points this way, that points in the k direction. Okay. This is x, this is y, z points at you. That's how they're defined. You're not allowed to just decide z points the other way. If x goes right, y goes up, z comes at you. Okay. And then finally, if it's a j direction cross i direction like that, look which way my thumb's pointing into the page, that's the negative k direction. There's a mnemonic for remembering this pattern. What you do is you write i, j, k twice. You don't have to put the carrots, but I'm doing it to remind myself they're vectors. And then if you go to the right, your answer is positive. If you have to go to the left, your answer is negative. For example, i cross j, we go i cross j is k. What if we had um, k cross i? We go k cross i is j. We're going to the right, so it's positive j. Well, what if we have j cross i? j cross i, we have to go left. We, want, we always stay adjacent, no skipping. j cross i is negative k. So if you have to do it this way, opposite to the way we read letters, then your answer will be negative. So what's i cross k? i cross k is negative j. All right? That's how uh, you remember them all quickly. You could reason them out, but that's a lot quicker. All right, here's our example problem. This is a classic uh, example problem you'd be given when you first learn the cross product vectors and torque. And it's very abstract. It's drawn in uh, xy coordinate system, so it's like a map of what's going on. These are real, this is not a graph, this is a map, because this is real dimensions. X and Y are in meters. You're given an axis, like where it is, and you're given a force and where it's applied. This axis here being a dot means that it's coming at you like that. So the axis is in the Z direction coming at you out of the XY plane. That's the axis. And then the force is given as being applied at this point, 8,3 meters, and in that direction given an IJ notation. Now notice the object's not even drawn. You could imagine there's like a door like this with a hinge here and someone's pushing on it here. That's okay. But we don't need to actually draw the object to calculate the torque around this axis. All right, so here's what's given. 
The force is given and it's applied at a point that has to be given, the point at which it's applied in order for you to figure out a torque. And they ask you to calculate its torque about this axis and the axis co axis's coordinates are given. And they want you to give the answer in IJK notation. Now you should probably pause the video and just try to do this on your own and see if you can. Here's how we do it. So here it is in miniature, everything's given from the previous page. And they ask us for the torque in IJK notation, so I ask myself, what is torque? Well, if I'm using vector notation, I probably need the vector definition of torque here, so I wrote it down. Okay, and I need, that means I need a vector for R and a vector for F. I have the vector for F, but I'm not given a vector for R. So what's the vector for R? Again, you should pause the video and try to figure that out on your own. Okay, well, the vector for R means an arrow that you draw starting at the axis, and ending at the point where the force is applied. This is why this point here, 8 comma 3, has to be given. You can't just say this force acts around that axis and ask for a torque. No, that's impossible. You have to be told where the force makes contact, where it's applied. So to find R, what you do is draw an arrow from the axis to the point where the force is applied, and that's R. Okay, let's figure out what that would be. So R, I went how many steps right in the I direction and how many steps in the J direction? Well, I went five steps in the I direction and I went one step in the positive J direction. And of course, that's meters. Five meters right, one meter up in our graph here. Okay, so now let's figure out the torque. It's R cross F. Okay, let's see how to do that. Well, we have something for R, so let's write that. 5i plus j. And then the cross symbol. And then we have something for F. Negative 20i plus 10j. Okay, now we're going to do the cross product with these two vectors. Fortunately, all of this vector stuff has been set up by Oliver Heaviside in the 1800s and others so that you could use all the algebra rules that you've internalized for, for, I don't know, 10 years now or so, and they will still work with the vector. So you look at this, two binomials multiplied together. What convenient four-letter word do you use that begins with an F? Well, if you're in a good mood and you know how to do it, that will be FOIL. F-O-I-L. First, outer, inner, last. Now, it's easy to do the multiplication, right? First, 5 times negative 20, right? Outer, 5 times 10. That's all easy. That's easy to multiply the coefficients. But the hard part now, because it's new, is going to be doing the cross product of the vectors. So here, first is i cross i. So let's just write that and see what it leads to. i cross i. Outer will be i cross j. Inner will be j cross i. j cross i. And last will be j cross j. Notice I'm looking at the cross product of the vector parts without worrying about the coefficients at all. I don't care if they're positive or negative or anything like that. that. That makes it harder if you do that. You can do it that way, but this is much easier. So what's i cross i? Well, we already know that's 0. And let's look ahead. j cross j is also 0. So that's going to be easy. I don't even have to figure out those coefficients. i cross j is k. And j cross i is negative k. And again, you should be doing this on your own, pausing the video and see what happens. See if you get it right, and then check with me. All right, uh, now we need these two coefficients. These are done. I don't need those parts because I know I'm multiplying by zero in each case, so those contribute nothing. So let's look at the outer. Five times 10, that goes under O. Five times 10 is 50, so this will be 50K. And then I look at the inner. One times negative 20, so this will be negative 20 times negative K. Negative K there, multiply inner. One times negative 20 is negative 20. Just like when you're doing FOIL, you're going to add these things, need the caret there. Okay, negative times the negative is a positive, so I get that the torque is 70 newton meters in the k direction. All three things have to be there for this to be a complete answer. You could also write 70k newton meters, I don't care. 70 newton meters in the k direction, what does the k direction mean? Does it mean there's something in this direction? Of course not. You have to translate that into what it means when a torque is expressed as a vector. If the vector points this way, it means you use that right-hand rule, point your thumb up, and cup the axis, and the direction your fingers go is the direction of rotation. So just as we expected, this would be a torque that's counterclockwise. 